Hi, everybody. Welcome to Sunday Night Live Stream. Uh, my name is Anita from Ketogenic Woman, and I do this every Sunday night. Um, and uh, I've been keto and carnivore for uh, about 10 years, and I've lost 145 pounds. I want to welcome you here, here to answer questions. And we just introduce different topics and sometimes have guests. So. Uh, yes, I was told I need to introduce myself when I start these things. So there, there it is. I would also like to introduce Bonnie and Melissa. They are our moderators tonight. So you will see them in the chat. They will be welcoming people, providing links and support and backup. Um, and, uh, oh, let's say hello to Terry too. She's back here somewhere operating <laughs> lights and cameras for me because this is a professional setup here. I want to assure you all, <laughs> whether I get lost or not, it's all professionally done. At least we try. So tonight we have a giveaway. It is this wonderful gift set from, ooh, there's my Vanna thing. Um, this, it's got, it's Redmond's Real Salt and it has uh, organic seasoning salt, onion salt, garlic salt, and just the ancient fine salt, which I go through buckets of. Like, I just love that stuff. Uh, if you want to enter, it is so easy. All you have to do is type the word salt in the comments and you will be automatically entered. We have a giveaway tool that will recognize the word salt and count your entry. For those of you watching on Facebook, if you're watching me on Facebook, come and enter salt. Or if you're, I think if you're on the Facebook video, if it's playing there, you can also enter salt in there. Uh, but to hedge your bets, maybe come here too. I, I don't know. I, I'm probably saying that all wrong and Bonnie and Melissa are going, oh, I thought we explained it to her. <laughs> um, so I do want to mention next week's giveaway. Uh, it, it's going to be some carnivore crisps. The only reason I'm mentioning it um, be, is because they are having a, their Black Friday sale right now. And I do have a link in the... Um, video notes, uh, the YouTube video notes. If you use that link and the code I put there, I can't remember what it is. I think it's black 23. If you go there, use that link, you'll get 20% off. And that ends in a couple of days. And so, um, you know, if you're not wanting to wait to see if you win my giveaway next week, order those for 20% off. Um, so how did everybody do for Thanksgiving? Those of you who are in the U.S., um, my Thanksgiving was October 10th, so I had already been there, done that over a month ago. And, uh, you know, some of you, uh, I would love to hear how, how it went for you. Uh, you know, maybe you need help getting back on track. Um, Maybe you just sailed right through it. Uh, uh, you know, this was probably the second year that it was easy for me. And I've been at this 10 years. So I know what you guys went through. I, I truly do. I mean, it is not easy to go to these social situations, you know, Thanksgiving dinners, parties, you know, office party season is, is on, full on. There are so many... Uh, it just feels hard sometimes, and 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 I know what that's like. Um, we have lots of tips we're going to talk about tonight, how to stay on track in these situations. And uh, so I'm going to start sharing some of those with you. I want to do a couple of shout outs before I get started. Hi, Susan, Lydia. Uh, welcome. Thank you for becoming a member. Oh, let's give a shout out to just Jason Keto and more. He is here. Yes, and uh, there is a lot of temptation. Hi, Danny. So nice to see you here as well. Uh, always happy to see you. And let's see who else I can say hi to here. Oh, my goodness. Look at all these people. Uh, oh, Neely. Hi. Glad you could make it as well. And who else? We, oh, 
Hi, I remember meeting you at TitoCon. So nice of you to be here. Good that you're entering for the salt. So everybody enter your salt word. Uh, Melody, hi. B-Dog, hello. Um, I really enjoy these Sunday afternoon talks. Thank you so much. I enjoy that you're here. Hello, Cheryl. Hello, Jennifer. I met you at KetoCon as well. Nice to see you here. Donna, hello. Uh, everybody, I probably, you know, obviously I can't say hi to all of you because like, look how many of you are here. I appreciate so much that you guys have come. Uh, and really, oh, oh, Carmen. Carmen says carnivore crisps are always out of what I want to try. I got an email today saying they've restocked. So hopefully you'll be able to get what you want today. Um, that would be fine. Aaron had a very small slice of butternut squash pie, moved on. You know, that's the main thing. You got to move on. You absolutely have to move on. Uh, Yvonne says, e easy to stay on keto, but I noticed I had too much cheese and now I'm craving it again and my finger joints are aching. Time to cut cheese 100%, I know. Uh, dairy and I are not friends. And, and thanks for coming, Yvonne. I really appreciate it. Uh, Diane, the holidays scare me. Took four months to get back on track last year. Yeah, that's the issue, isn't it? Um, because sometimes we think, okay, I'm just going to do what I want on that day, you know, whether it's Thanksgiving, Christmas, uh, office party, and then the next day I'm just going to get right back on. And unfortunately, it doesn't always work that way. Sometimes it does, but not always. Um, so that's, you know, you, you just ha you have to kind of know yourself. Uh, Melody says she ate ham and realized that green beans hurt her joints. Live and learn. Yeah, uh, there are some vegetables for me, too, that uh, are just not the best thing. Uh, green beans I can tolerate. I mean, but they're not my favorite, so I don't even bother. Uh, but I like, the, you know, asparagus. I can tolerate that. There's a few other things. Uh, I probably can count them on one hand, though, because most of them give me heartburn. Uh, Denny M. Hi from North Vancouver. I used to live in North Vancouver, so hello. Nice to have you here. Uh, let's see. Okay. Uh, da -da. Just looking through. Oh, lots of people giving me the salt. Uh, okay, so I am going to go over and uh, just see what questions. Oh, hang on a sec. There is a question. Hello from Los Angeles, funny girl. Wondering if I can lose the belly fat left over from a tummy tuck. I, I am not sure of that because I have not had a tummy tuck, but I have belly fat <laughs> and so I'm not at my goal weight yet. So I'm still working on that. Uh, now, I don't know if you know about autophagy, apparently for people who have tried everything else, uh, there are certain ways to invoke autophagy and fasting is one of those ways. Um, they say after I think it's 16 to 18 hours of fasting, autophagy kicks in and it's basically recycling cells in your body. And it's one of the favored ways to get rid of um, belly fat. Uh, but there's also uh, that combined with, uh, you know, making sure you get good nutrition and exercise and movement, all those things together can help that. So uh, maybe somebody here, if they've had a tummy tuck or they know, um, you know, some more about this can offer, you know, whatever experience they've had. B-Dog, how do you make your coffee now? Well, right now it is, it's either decaf or it is um, like a, like I've been trying some mushroom alternative coffee called Raza. Uh, now, I got that idea from Indigo Neely's channel because I think she was trying to get off coffee and I just happened to catch one of her videos one day where, where she was showing this. So I ordered some and, um, you know, it 
sort of tastes like coffee. I, I think what it is in the morning is I just like something hot to drink. And so it can be bone broth uh, for me. I've done hot water with lemon. Uh, and I've tried different things. Uh, so yeah, uh, you know, that's kind of what I'm doing. I, I, I do think in January, in honor of World Carnivore Month, which is every January, I am going to let go of uh, all, all of that stuff, uh, like the decaf coffee and everything, because I want to make it very clean. Uh, Sui Yun, uh, thank you for pr providing a great content every week. I love your channel. I also live in Canada. Yay. Do you need to pay a duty tax along with a shipping fee when ordering carnivore crisps? Uh, unfortunately, yes, anything that we order from the U.S., uh, unless it's sometimes U.S. Amazon will build in the duty and shipping into the price. But oftentimes, like, no matter what you order from the U.S., you have to pay you have to pay duty. So um, let's see. Maggie Malone. Oh, thank you. Uh, I've learned how to use a hair straightener finally after all these years. Uh, Susan, is the person that films you live nearby and work just for you? You both do a great job. She is so, she lives upstairs. Like it is, it is amazing. She's a relative. Um, and so we share a house with uh, some other relatives that we all live here. And uh, it is very handy to have family that is willing to help you. And uh, thank you so much uh, for asking. Uh, I appreciate uh, her very much because without her, I don't think that this would go. Amanda, hello. Uh, oh my goodness. Okay. Oh my goodness. Hello. <laughs> okay. Let's see. Uh, there's another question here. Was there a Redmond's Black Friday sale or Element sale? Not that I was aware of. Usually I get emailed on these things and I didn't get that kind of an email but we do have this lovely pack to give away today from redmond's and uh, you just have to put salt in the comments and it could be coming your way uh, now but speaking of element there is going to be a nice fancy gift pack that i will have to give away in uh, maybe two or three weeks i think so you will see that if you stay tuned. Um, okay. Uh, going back over here to, oh, here we go. Okay. So uh, before I answer any more questions, I figure I should start on our content tonight. And that is staying on track. So I know, I know that we have things coming up and there's different ways to handle it. And uh, it would be interesting to hear uh, how you guys are handling things. Like I found after years of, you know, handling it that some things went better than others, some ways of handling it. So for example, if you're going in and you're, you know, there's a big family dinner and uh, Aunt Sally is there and she wants you to try her special cake or whatever her dish is. If you say I'm on a diet, does that does that work? I, I, I found that that didn't work very well for me because it seems like when you start telling people you're on a diet or you're, you know, you're trying to do this or that, a, a lot of times they t almost take it as a challenge to, to get you to, to cave in. And so I think it's better rather than saying, um, no, thank you. I'm on a diet. Just to say something different. Like, um, you could even, you could even say, uh, I, I just, I don't, I don't eat that. Um, or like, for instance, if it's a certain type of food, um, well, let's, let's take sugar. I don't eat sugar. And you know what? I, there's, there's this fellow who comes and visits here every so often. Well, he hasn't come here since we've lived in Victoria, but uh, when I was in the other place, he would come by and, and we'd have dinner and stuff. And every so often, and, and he, he did not eat sugar. He was just, he just 
didn't eat sugar of any kind and he didn't eat sweetener of any kind. It, uh, he, it, he felt it affected him. And he would just always say, you know, uh, like he would ask if something had sugar in, I, I don't eat sugar. He would eat everything else, but I don't eat sugar. And, and if you just say it matter of factly like that, people just take you at your word. Okay, uh, no explanation is, is needed. You don't eat that. Um, so so that's, that is a way to handle it. Um, so we have, we have kind of some, like this document. I'm just going to just show it on the screen for a moment. Uh, this document, uh, Melissa and Bonnie helped me put this together. Now, I know you can't read it, but the good news is that you can download it. Uh, we've got the link in the video notes. You can download it. It's a PDF. You can, you know, print it off or, you, you know, just it, it is three pages. But you, if you wanted to, you could print it off. You could share it with people. You could put it on, um, just have it on your screen, like on your computer, so that you can um, read over all the tips. Because I probably won't be able to say every tip that's on here tonight. Uh, but there are lots of good tips on here. Uh, things like, uh, so let's talk about what do you do before you go somewhere to prepare? You, I eat. I will, I'll eat a couple of burgers or even a full meal before I go. Um, and that doesn't mean I won't eat there. It means I'll probably eat a lot less when I'm there. So it's, uh, you know, it's your choice how much to eat. But I just make sure that I'm not arriving ravenous or uh, you know, not having had a meal uh, in several hours. If, if you go and you're feeling satiated, you, you care less if, you know, there's not something specifically for you. But um, that said, I also bring stuff. Even, even if I am, even if I've eaten and I don't plan to eat when I'm there, sometimes what I think I'm able to do and what I'm actually doing in the situation when all those tempting foods are around are two different things. So uh, I have the last, I would say the last three years of uh, like, especially since I've been carnivore, it's, it's pretty easy. Well, I, it was a lot easier being keto, but now that I'm carnivore, it was more challenging to attend these things where uh, sometimes there's no meat, <laughs> like there's no plain meat. And so I made sure that I was, was not only full and satisfied, but if I got hungry while I was there, that I had something. My favorite thing to bring is charcuterie boards. So I'm just going to show you a few. And I have videos for all of these, and they are also linked down below. Uh, here's one that I made. So this is uh, deviled eggs and bacon roses. Those are bacon roses in the middle. And then I've got, it's covered with pepperoni sticks and I've got, you know, on the bottom there is bacon, uh, twisty things, I call them. I don't know what, they probably have an official name. So that's one. And then another one is that I did a couple of years ago. This is a butter board. And again, I don't know if you know what a butter board is, but it's a board and you just spread butter on it. And I covered my butter board with more bacon bits, uh, like crumbled up bacon. And I covered it, uh, those little yellow things you see are butter bites and bacon roses. And the idea is, I mean, other people can take little breads and crackers and things and scoop up. Um, I use pork rinds. But yeah, the, so the idea with the butter board is you just scoop up what you want on a, on a cracker or a pork rind and, uh, and that's it. Um, and then this is one that I made last year and this is a Christmas tree charcuterie board. And it's basically those uh, salami slices, cheese, I threw a few olives on there. You don't have to eat the olives if you're carnivore unless you want to, but you know, the keto people will eat the olives. Those little snowflakes are, I cut them up, like I had a snowflake uh, cookie cutter and cut them up out of uh, cheese. It's all cheese. So basically cheese and meat. Uh, there's some very clean deli meats out there, like prosciutto only has salt in it. 
for example. Um, and you can get from butcher stores. I, I like to buy um, my deli meats because sometimes they have their own in-house um, things that they've made that have less ingredients. But, you know, it's having even even if you're having deli meats that have you know, some questionable ingredients, it's got to be better than diving into the carbs. You still are, you know, are, you're going to go home feeling pretty good and no food hangovers and, and that kind of thing. So, um, so yeah, I just wanted to give you an idea of some creative things you can do. There's purse bacon. Uh, I, I, I have purse bacon in my purse lots of times going out. There are things like, um, like I've, I've even brought butter, pats of butter. Uh, butter has a very calming effect. If you're feeling anxious, you can go into the bathroom and pop a tablespoon of butter in your mouth. And, and it's just like a Zen moment, you know, uh, it can, it can help. So all these kinds of things. So, so that's before, uh, that's before you go, you know, just, just, uh, just make sure that you prepare, you know, yourself and prepare to bring something along. Um, so uh, that's, that's kind of my favorite thing to do. Um, so other things, you know, if you're at the event uh, and people are questioning you, I find it much easier. I don't bring up my diet how I eat. I, I find it easier just to, I mean, if you want to, like, I guess you have to know, you know, you, you know who you're talking to, you know, your relationships with them. Um, so sometimes this may be different. Some, there might be some people who you can talk for hours about health reasons and it can go well. You can um, have discussions about why you're eating the way you're eating and 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 that can be fine but other times you're going to have people who just take that as a challenge to challenge you or argue with you and, and who wants that at a family gathering or a holiday gathering uh, i mean you know i i've used some like i i i've used things like like if somebody's really pushing food at me I will just start to make things up. Like, like I will just say, oh, I had that already. I tried it. It was delicious. Or I will say, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll have some later. As soon as I finish my coffee, I, I'm going to have some. Or as soon as I, you know, as soon as some event, as, uh, like, you know, you can, you can kind of defer it and just say, yeah. Uh, or, or I'm full from what I just ate. So in a little while, I will try that out. Thank you. You know, and, and that just, you know, gives you that time to either remove yourself from that person or go off and do something else. They're not going to remember. I mean, if they come and ask you later, Oh, did you try it? Oh, it's great. It was delicious. Thank you. I, I'm not above lying. I, you know, if, if they're pushing food at me after I've already said no, all bets are off. They're, I, I'm, I'm going to do what I have to do to protect myself. And uh, if that includes stretching the truth, I'm, I'm okay with that. And so the other thing is that, you know, you're like, just have some reasonable boundaries for yourself. Um, I like to think about what I call my, my ground zero. And that would be that I'm not going to eat your cake. I'm not going to eat you know, your, your gravy, your, you know, all those, your stuffing, all those things. Um, but I might try some vegetables. Like, like I'm, I'm, I consider myself to be carnivore, but I'm not above having a pickle or olives or some clean looking veggies. I'm, I'm okay with that, but it's a boundary I set ahead of time. As long as it's on the spectrum of whole foods, one ingredient, that kind of thing. I'm not going to beat myself up if I tried a few asparagus spears or had a little bit of salad or something like that. Totally don't care. I'm so done with labels now. I, I mean, I'm I'm not trying to be the, the perfect carnivore here. I'm just trying to get healthy. Carnivore is the way I feel best. And sometimes I can stray around the edges 
under social pressure. And I go home feeling okay about that. And I wake up the next morning feeling okay about that. You know, it's always, it's always helpful to think about, okay, so if I'm going on Friday to this particular dinner or party or whatever, what is Saturday me going to remember about this? How will I feel on Saturday? You know, do I want to wake up with a food hangover, a sugar hangover? Do I want to wake up feeling bloated? And do I want to be up all night with heartburn? Those sorts of things. I No, I don't. Um, so I think about future me, you know, the day or two after, cravings coming back, that kind of thing. I find that um, just as long as I'm, you know, keeping within that boundary that I set for myself of, you know, whole foods, no sugar, that kind of thing. I feel pretty good after, uh, unless I happen to have, you know, run into some black pepper I didn't see coming. I had, for some reason, that's the worst for me. But you have to know what foods, you know, you really have, like there's a solid line of what foods you absolutely cannot have or it'll trigger um, acid reflux. Like I know which foods those are, like nightshades and things for me. Um, if you're unsure, you know, maybe it's a lesson you still have to learn and, and, and maybe you'll have something that will trigger something that you didn't expect and you'll know for next time. I mean, all of this is learning. I didn't do all this in year one. You know, it's taken me some, a lot of time to, on this journey to really narrow down all of those things and, um, what, you know, what really affects me and what I can get away with and what, and what I want to get away with. Um, you know, these, these are things that, uh, that happen and, and, and maybe you did go off plan, but that doesn't mean that, you know, it's a, it's a license to mess up until January 1st, because you, that's where you don't want to go. What you want to do is what uh, we already had some person said they had this particular thing and then they move on. And, and honestly, uh, when you can learn how to do that, that's, that's half the battle one right there with you can move on the next day. Don't beat yourself up. Don't punish yourself. Like I, so many people, I see them come and they say, okay, uh, you know, I totally binged on Thanksgiving day or Christmas day or whatever going on a seven day water fast now. Well, really, is that realistic? I know if I said that, it wouldn't last a day. I mean, that's a not, I'm not committed to seven day water fast at the best of times. And I'm certainly not gonna be committed to one if I've had a bad day and I've got cravings and things like that. I, I The best way to come back from a big mistake day or a small mistake day is to eat as much of the good, clean food that you love. Get as much nutrition into you. Get as much meat into you. Like just, you know, go go for that fatty meat so that you're full and satisfied quickly so that you don't think about food. Like you're just too full to think about food. For me, that is, that is my best recovery tool if I have had something bad like that happen. So um, all of those things are great things to keep in mind. And uh, these pages of tips are, it's all in here. So uh, yeah, go ahead and download that, that link after and uh, keep it for yourself to guide you through the next, uh, couple, the next few weeks. Uh, okay, so I'm going to go back to the, uh, let me see, whoops, I'm in the wrong list here, I need to be there. I want to go back and find the questions. Uh, okay, uh, okay, so somebody bought, Christy Adams bought castor oil packs and using it not going very well and have had bad side effects. I love my castor oil pack. I did not have any problems. So, um, you know, maybe look into like, you should only use a tablespoon your first time and not every day. Like it, this, like you didn't say what kind of bad side effects. So it's hard for me to know. 
that, I mean, maybe it's too much. I would use a tablespoon. Um, I place it over my, my liver. So right under my right rib cage, I'm using it um, for uh, so digestive reasons, uh, you know, bowel movements, that kind of thing. I find it keeps me regular. Um, and I'm not sure if you were using it for that or what your bad side effects are, but yeah, just, I mean, and maybe it isn't for everybody. Like, uh, you know, if, if you're having some kind of a bad reaction to it, I, I, I would stop using it um, until you figure out how much you should be using and, and uh, yeah, maybe you can come back and let me know what, what the reaction actually is. Um, Michael, have you ever done intermittent fasting? Yes. And, and I actually, even though I'm not an intentional faster, I do, once I finish my last meal of the day, which is early for most people, I usually eat between four and five o'clock and I have no more food until the next day, sometimes, uh, as late as 10 or, you know, but sometimes I get hungry and I'll, I'll go, I'll eat or I'll eat when I get hungry the next day, but it is a small intermittent fast at 14 to 16 hours. Uh, but I believe that that is an intermittent fast of sorts, but yeah, I don't do, if I, there's been a couple of times where I've done a 24 hour fast. Uh, I'm not, I'm not a dedicated faster, to be honest. I, I just, I just get hungry and I want to eat. <laughs> so that's me. Uh, some people do really well by it though. I have nothing against it. Uh, Maggie says her daughters, uh, she and her daughters have a tradition of making Christmas cookies. I don't know how to handle this since I'm carnivore for the last 10 months. Well, I guess, yeah, if it's the making, making of the cookies is one thing, um, eating is another. I do know people who have got to the point where they are able to do that kind of thing. I'm not one of them. I don't think I could make the cookies. Uh, maybe what I would suggest is that you let them make the cookies and you just maybe sit and have uh, some coffee or something with them and watch them do it. Like I find I can't, I, I, I don't want to touch the dough. I don't want to be so close that I can smell it. It's, it's too, you know, so baking is kind of off the table for me. And maybe someday I'd be able to do that. And maybe someday you'll be able to do that without wanting to put it in your mouth. But I, I understand, I understand where, where you're coming from. Um, I, I would maybe try to come up with some different traditional things you can do or encourage them to just, you know, maybe explain to them your dilemma. Um, and they just want to be with you really. So just be with them in another way or, you know, hang out with them while they do that. Uh, you know, maybe you can help in a different way. Um, but yeah, it's, it's nice if you can spend time with your daughters for sure. I, I understand. Uh, Facebook user. Um, okay. So somebody's watching us from Facebook. So, um, so if you are watching from Facebook, you can just tell StreamYard who you are so that it puts your name up. So, um, but do you use protein powder or collagen? I used to use collagen, but I, when I ran out, I didn't reorder it. Uh, just because I, I felt like I was probably getting a good amount of collagen in the amount of, you know, especially since I upped my protein a lot, I, I do get a good amount. I, I save those bones, I make the bone broth. Now that said, I've ordered some protein powder. I had so many people talking about Equip protein powder. I decided I, I'm going to try it. They had a Black Friday sale and they have an unflavored version and so I want to try that because it might be handy for days when uh, I'm, I'm super busy and can't, you know, can't get to my protein goals. It, it just might help. I've heard that is a good clean one. So I'm going to try that. So we'll, I'll keep you posted on that one. Uh, Ethel, have you tried two crazy ketos carnivore mac and cheese? I have heard of it, but I have not tried it. 
Um, I, it's, it sounds great. Now, the only thing is I'm not doing dairy right now. So I think that is um, why I haven't sought it out because I've heard a lot of people say how good it is and I'm, I'm sure it is. Those two are fantastic. Um, Joe comes up with such great uh, recipes. Uh, so I, yeah, lo love it. Just ha I, trying to not look at things that have lots of dairy in them right now. Um, I mean, I'm not saying I'll never have dairy, but I've, I've really cut that and it has to be a once in a while treat for me. Uh, just Jason. Uh, yeah, I agree. Just Jason keto, never punish yourself. If you slip, if you slip up, I mean, there, the punishing it, it, it just perpetuates the problem. I think, you know, you feel bad, punish yourself, you fail at the punishment. So you're going to, you know, it's a vicious cycle. I hundred percent agree. Uh, what is wrong with black coffee? Gene Hendrix. How, what about bulletproof coffee? Um, I don't think there's anything wrong with black coffee. I'm, I'm just choosing not to have coffee right now. It's, it's the, the caffeine coffee may be right for you. I mean, I'm, you know, I never say, you know, people should not drink coffee. Um, I, I, I feel like for myself, sometimes I, I, I question things that I feel like I'm addicted to. So the things that I am questioning right now in my journey are things like coffee and things like dairy. Those, those are very addictive things for me. And, and so I'm, I'm on the lookout for things that make me act in a way that someone who's addicted to something would act. And, and that's all it is for me. I don't have any particular health reason to stop coffee. I know, I know that some people out there, you know, they have that and that is fine for them. Everyone has to examine these things themselves and, and look at, you know, what is right for you to do. You know, uh, everyone should research, you know, if you're, if you're not sure, that if you should be having something, just research it and, and see if it's right for you or not. Uh, Becky, what do you do with castor oil pack? It is, uh, some people use it as a detox, um, as a liver detox. It I heard about it from Danny Conway and Kelly Hogan. There is a video out there where they talk about this. And uh, they uh, I used it for the specific reason to regulate my bowel movements and it worked for me for that. So, uh, but if you go on YouTube, there's people use castor oil for lots of different things. So uh, I would encourage that. Uh, coffee and MCT oil. Oh, my thoughts. Thank you, Michael. Uh, I am not able to make, uh, or I'm not able to take MCT oil. It turns my stomach upside down. That doesn't mean that it's not good for somebody else. Uh, some people swear by MCT oil. Just make sure it's that good quality one. And I can't, uh, I get the numbers mixed up, whether it's C10 or C8. Uh, you want to read the label and get high quality MCT oil. Now, some people have said if you cannot tolerate the oil, there's powder. And uh, so that's an option. But I, yeah, um, if you're able to tolerate it and it uh, makes you feel good, I, I, I feel, and, and it's the, you know, the good clean stuff. I feel that that's a, that's a good thing. Low carb spin is in the house. Hi, and you have an amazing suggestion here. Uh, make dough ornaments. I think that's a wonderful idea. And, and that, you know what, uh, for the person who uh, wanted to make cookies with their daughters, like, deck, like there's all kinds of crafty things like that that you could do and, and uh, like even decorating the tree together. So yeah, thank you for that wonderful idea. Bonnie has some keto cookie recipes that she makes for her family and they love them. 
I don't eat them as a rule, but I feel better feeding those to the family. Yes, there's that too. You know, if you're going to bring some cookies along for your nieces and nephews and other people in your family, um, it's kind of cool to bring them something that you feel comfortable that they're not going to, uh, you know, get, I mean, Kids normally get way too much sugar around the holidays, but if you can do something to mitigate that, that, that I think that's great. Question from Audrey. Have you found your sense of smell has intensified or taste buds have changed? Some of my favorite foods have become unenjoyable and have a weird taste. I have not noticed anything with my sense of smell. However, taste buds definitely change. And things that I used to love, I I don't anymore. I just, yeah, they they don't taste as good to me as they once did when I do have them. Um, so I I think that can be a good thing. That can work in your favor. Um, yeah. So yeah, has anyone else out there had changes in their sense of smell? Chime in so so we know. Uh, and Aunt G. Kuhn, do you think the higher protein and lower fat in your diet have jumped your weight loss? Um, well, definitely, that's what I've been following in the last uh, two months, three months. And uh, yeah, and so I did have a big jump in my weight loss lately. Um, I've gone down a couple of sizes, like I'm I'm almost fitting into size 12 pants now. And when I started, it was size 16. So definitely has, has helped. I'm also exercising at the same time. Um, and so the protein, I want the higher protein because I'm doing um, some weight bearing exercises too. So uh, they kind of, you know, go hand in hand, I think. A uh, question from Diane, best uses for beef bone broth powder. Uh, so I've used it for, I do have some, I, you can use it just to make a cup of bone broth if you like. Um, so I also use it to soften uh, the, the bread recipes, you know, like the egg white bread. If you put some bone broth powder in there, that will soften the, like, you know how it can have kind of a styrofoam texture. I found that the bone broth powder, plus adding a couple of yolks, in other words, a little more fat, makes though that egg white bread taste better. And I do, I do have a recipe that includes the beef bone broth powder. I also um, will use a scoop. If I'm making a stew or braising something in the instant pot or cooking something in the crock pot, a scoop of the bone broth powder um, gives some more flavor, like some intensity of flavor. Um, so I like using it for that as well. Uh, Kim Jackson, do you still make and enjoy egg white protein bread considering it's carnivore-ish? Uh, I have got, so I think that egg white protein bread is perfectly fine for carnivores. Uh, I came up with a couple of versions that didn't have all the extra gums and, and powders and things like that, mostly because I, I you know, I have a very sensitive stomach and I, I found it was just too much, but it also makes it more carnivore when you leave out some of those things. And I, I don't see anything wrong with making them. I have just gotten so incredibly busy and, and so thing, things had to go. And also, I'm in Canada. Um, the egg white protein has doubled in price over the last two years. Like, like a couple of years ago, I was making egg white bread all the time. Uh, and I was, you know, doing some videos on it and things like that. And now I you know, my bag of egg white powder is like, it's like a little bag of gold, you know, it's like, okay, I have to save it for the ultimate thing. I don't know what that is, but I, I just, I, I feel like I don't want to part with my powder 
because I don't want to buy another bag. Like I remember being shocked when it was $40 and you know, it, the price just keeps going up. It, I mean, it's, it's insane. And I think maybe one of these days when, maybe when I uh, finally retire from my day job, I will have time to do things like dehydrate my own egg whites. <laughs> I, got, I don't know, but definitely I'm, I'm not making it as much. I'm trying to keep things simple and cheap uh, because if I do retire from my job, I'm going to have to take a harder look at my budget. So, uh, and that won't include buying egg white powder. I could, I can tell you. So I'm definitely on the fence on this. Uh, I probably will make it again. Uh, you know, in the summertime, it's nice to have burger buns and things like that. There's, and sometimes every once in a while, I would like to have uh, an egg white bread pizza or something, a carnivore pizza. Um, those are things that you can do with it. And, but you know what? I also appreciate the simplicity of just having steak more and more, um, or, or not, not just steak, but meat, just, just meat. Um, I'm loving salmon these days. I seem to be going through a phase where I can't get enough of that. And I've, you know, that's kind of fallen a little bit by the wayside for me lately, but who knows in a few months, it, it, things might be different. I'm not sure. Uh, Carnivore, Leo, Rhonda, nice to see you here. Thanks for coming. Appreciate that so much. Any suggestions? This is from Jay. Any suggestions for weight bearing exercises you can do at home that don't involve buying expensive equipment? Yeah, I mean, I use, uh, I, I have a little, I hate to call it a weight room, but I have a little weight area in my bedroom. At, you know, just kind of, I squeezed it. I, ha I just have a few dumbbells and I have a set of bands and I got those all at a local hardware store. Um, you can certainly get that on Amazon. I do plan to do some videos on it, some shorts on what I'm doing uh, to have those weight bearing exercise. There is also body weight bearing. You can do a lot of weight bearing using your own body weight that doesn't involve any equipment at all. Um, I, for example, I do wall push-ups. That is one thing. Um, squats and those sorts of things don't require uh, anything uh, unless you want to add weights to those types of exercises. So uh, there's definitely things you can do and you're definitely going to hear more about that. Um, I do plan, like I I have recently had a talk with Coach Bronson. If any of you know him, you'll see a video coming out soon, probably hopefully this week, um, where I had a chat with him about, you know, women in our age group. And I don't know if you're even in my age group or not, but um, women, exercise, protein, that sort of thing. That's coming out this week. And he said he would be happy to come on a live stream with me. And he works with uh, older women a lot. I was surprised at how, you know, what percentage of his clients are older women like like me and, you know, including his mom. And, uh, you know, when I, like, yeah, make sure you come to that so you can ask him these questions directly. I'm, I, he, you know, I'm sure he will be happy to answer any exercise questions like that. Okay, uh, Squeaky Toys, watching from Kamloops, BC. Oh, nice. My auntie lives in Kamloops, so I will probably come there sometime. Uh, so, and thank you. Thank you for becoming a YouTube member. That is awesome. Um, so let me just check on the giveaway tool. I just want to see where we are in that. Um, we have 131 entries. So uh, we're going to be running that, uh, the giveaway in about five minutes. And so uh, if you have not entered to win the salt gift pack, it is very nice to make a perfect gift for somebody. If you haven't entered, all you have to do is put salt in the comment and uh, then whoever wins, make sure that you send me your address so that I can mail it to you. So thank you very much. 
let me think. Oh, uh, uh, just trying to get to the, the uh, uh, just for one second here. Okay. So uh, low carb spin. Um, Low Carb Spin has asked if I'm going to do a video of my weight bearing routines. I'm okay, so I am no Jane Fonda for those of you who remember that workout. I will not be doing a long term, a long form video of an exercise routine. I'm just not qualified to do anything like that. We have people on YouTube who are qualified to do that, but what I can do is and what I've decided to do is I'm going to do a series of shorts where I'm going to show some really simple basic exercises that I do and how I do them and I'm going to show how because I had a knee injury and different things like that I'm going to show how I modified them from when I started and it was able to do almost nothing to where I'm now able to do a half decent um, exercise routine. So I'll, it, it's going to be a very limited thing. Just don't feel like I'm qualified to do an exercise video. Um, yeah, but thanks for asking. Uh, Audrey, what is your number one carnivore keto appliance? Your hubby wants a list for the holiday gifts. I said a ninja 10 in one. So I love Ninja products. I have Ninja products. Um, I I have the air fryer, the indoor air or the indoor in can't say it, the indoor grill, which I use as an air fryer. You can use it. You can bake. You can grill. I think it's a six in one. Um, like it has the lid that hinges. I think the ten in one has it does more stuff. So that sounds good to me. I don't have a ten in one, but I, I'm sure it's amazing. Um, I do, I mean, there's a lot of things like I, I couldn't live without my, my, uh, cast iron pan. I couldn't live without my Ninja. I love having, uh, different gadgets. I'm a gadget person. Um, so yeah, I mean, I, I have like all of my favorite appliances and gifty type items and must haves I do have an Amazon, like a custom Amazon store that you can search through. It's all things I've put in there. And, and so you can kind of look through, uh, that link is also, it's always below in all my videos. Um, you know, I share that with you guys. Um, it helps it. I mean, you know, we get like 1% commission on most things. It's very small, but it all adds up and helps to support what we do here. Um, so Becky, how much water do you drink daily? Lately, I find myself not drinking much, not thirsty. I'm a drink to thirst person. I don't set myself a water goal. Like I don't have, you know, a goal of drinking six or eight glasses of water a day. If I'm thir like there's days when I can't seem to get enough water and there's other days when I go through and I'm like, do I have water today? <laughs> I think it's good to drink some water, but I don't think it's good to force it. Um, it should feel a little natural. Uh, so yeah, that's, um, I, I just don't have a set amount that, that I drink. So I wouldn't worry about it, Becky. Uh, oh, thank you, Bonnie. She has put up my my sh my shopping channel address there, whatever that's called. Uh, okay, Claudia, will you have someone on your live talking about leg cramps and what to do? Well, um, I think there's so many different. Like, I don't know if there's one person out there who who is like the leg cramp person that I could have talking about that. I mean, I use electrolytes for that. Um, and, uh, you know, other people have said that they take uh, magnesium supplements or a potassium supplement. I, I'd be careful about that because, uh, you know, I kind of think that sometimes people can go too high with with potassium and it should be something that you discuss with your doctor. Some simple, other simple things would be Epsom salts. 
I find that um, a good soak, like, and, and if you don't have a bathtub, you can get a bowl and put like a cup of Epsom salts in there, soak your feet for a while in warm Epsom, in warm water and Epsom salts. And, and I think you'll have a cramp free night. Um, if that comes during the night, like it does for most people. So there are lots of little tips and tricks out there for late cramps. Um, and, you know, maybe maybe some of those, what I mentioned, would, would help. Uh, so, oh, I, I did have, so one person said to me that they gave up all salt. So they have, they eat only meat with no salt at all, no seasonings, and that fixed their late cramps. I, you know, I, I don't know about that, but uh, that if it did for them, then, then great. And also uh, maybe compression socks. Some people have said compression socks help. So, you know, these are, these are things you can try. Uh, low carb spin, do you take any trace minerals? Um, no, because, well, I don't know if I do or not. See, that's how... That's how much I pay attention to supplements. I take, the only supplements I'm taking are, I am back to taking a couple of drops of iodine and my my element. Um, any trace minerals I get are, are in the meat. <laughs> That's, yeah. Uh, squeaky toys. Oh, thank you so much for the uh, super chat. Any thoughts on taking iodine if I'm on Synthroid meds for hypothyroid? Okay, so I'm not a doctor, so I can't I can't say, you know, I can't comment on those meds because I just I just don't know. I, but I um, I do take iodine and I would highly recommend that you watch uh, videos from Dr. Elizabeth Bright and Judy Cho and they've done uh, a video, at least one video or more together where they talk about iodine for people and they talk about thyroid. So um, yeah, if you if you can find those videos, um, I will find them later after this live is over, which is going to be pretty, wow, I see we're at 57 minutes already. If I can find that video, I'm going to also link it below in the description because I think it's important that you, you get a, an answer for that from people who actually know, um, you know, who have that knowledge. And, and Judy Cho and Elizabeth Bright have that knowledge. Okay, so let's run the giveaway. So we are going to share the screen and uh, see who on the salt pack, there's 176 entries. I think that's the most we've ever had. Here we go. It's very exciting to watch these names come up. Janet Deaton is our winner. Let me just write that down. Janet, congratulations. Okay, so uh, if you could email me after the show or, you know, as at your earliest convenience, if you could email me at ketogenicwoman at gmail.com, uh, send me an email and give me your address so that I can send this to you, Janet, this belongs to you now. So thank you so much for entering the contest. And uh, next week we will give away some carnivore crisps. I haven't decided what product from them yet, um, but uh, you know maybe it'll be the tallow, maybe it'll be some chips. I have some, uh, what do you call it? Brisket chips, those are my favorite. I think, I think we could do that. Um, okay, so we, wow, we are in the last minute. I just, Wow, I, I want to thank you guys. I think I have now answered all the, the questions, but let me just take. Yeah, I think we've got to the we've got to the bottom of the questions. So, um, you know, I as and you guys know, I continue to answer them 
afterwards, like I'll come back tomorrow to the, um, you know, to read any comments that came in after the live ended and we'll do my best to answer them then. And um, I just want to thank you guys for spending this hour with me. I know I probably, you know, talked a lot and talked fast, but please don't forget to get your download and uh, grab this from the link. It's, it's a PDF and it has so many helpful tips in it for the holidays. Thank you guys so much for being here. And everybody have a fantastic rest of your Sunday night. And also, uh, you know, for anything that is coming up, um, you know, hopefully some of this has helped. We'll see you guys next week um, at the next at the next live. I don't know if I'm going to have a guest or just be solo, but either way, I'll try to make it fun. Good night, everybody. <laughs>